Man cannot perceive wisdom. He cannot understand his meaning because the basic keys to his knowledge are still unknown to him. In 1880, this parcel of land in southern India near Madras was purchased by a Russian woman, a woman who dreamed of the day when people from different parts of the world will gather here under one roof to support each other in their search for wisdom and truth, to discover their inner power and provide a service to humanity by fighting against ignorance, to lessen the burden of suffering in the world through the dissemination of divine wisdom. This world-famous woman was an enigmatic person, even for those who thought they knew her well. For some, she was a great being who succeeded in reaching the highest levels of wisdom and illumination, a woman who explored new paths in the development of humanity. For others, she was a heretic who advocated the eradication of all religious creeds. There were those who saw her as an example of mercy and compassion. Others thought her ruthless. Some referred to her as a woman of endless patience. To others, she was known for her explosive anger. It seems that there were no emotional or personality traits lacking in the complex personality of this woman. In Russia, her land of origin, for decades her name was clad in secrecy, rumors and mystery. She was born in 1831 in Ekaterinislav, in this house. Her mother's family was of an old and noble Russian ancestry that could be traced to Prince Dolgorky. Her father's family descended from German nobles who settled in Russia and served the Tsar. Her mother, Elena Gunn, was a famous and gifted writer. She gave birth to two talented daughters. One of them, Vera, would also become a writer, Vera Petrovna Shilavyovskia. The eldest, Leola, was a clever and highly imaginative child. But her mother always felt that her destiny would be a difficult one, that she would suffer greatly throughout her life. I am Lola. That was my nickname. My full name is Legena Petrovna. Elena Petrovna Blavatsky. How strange it is to return to the place where one is born. It's been more than 160 years. Everything has changed. Except for the house itself its walls, the air around it. It seems like spring now. Has the time finally come for me to tell all that really happened in my life? It has always been a source of great bitterness and despair for me to know that in my motherland, the motherland that I loved so much and felt such homesickness for all my life that my name was trampled on and associated with so many lies. Who are you, Madame Bablatsky? 
How do you describe the moment in your life when you hear an inner voice calling you to your destiny? How do you describe changes so transcendental that you suddenly realize that everything in life is an illusion, that everything we cannot see is, in truth, our reality? This land, now starting down the path, it is but a sad emissary trapped behind gates that block the way into the valley of the light, a light which cannot be extinguished by any storm. Before you step onto the path, you must eliminate all your desires, cleanse your mental body, purify your heart. You cannot follow the path without giving yourself completely to it, without actually becoming the path yourself. It is the only possible way, and at the end of the path, you will hear the voice of silence. I heard the voice calling me toward a mysterious horizon that held the promise of secret knowledge. It seemed to me that I did not belong to myself. Perhaps my behavior seemed irrational to others, sometimes even hilarious. You can ask the eyewitnesses, such as my dearest cousin, Sergei Bishevit. In his biography of me, he described in a very interesting way a number of the episodes of my life. Ask him about me. Elena Petrovna was married very young. Her husband was an elderly man, a decent man, Blavatsky, a governor general of the Yerevan region in Armenia. Only a year after her marriage, she left her husband and fled to her grandfather in Tbilisi. Her grandfather, distressed by this turn of events, sent Elena Petrovna to her father in St. Petersburg. She was traveling with her servants when she arrived at the Black Sea. Here she made arrangements to board an English ship bound for Constantinople. There she found work as a circus rider. A famous singer of the time, named Mitrovich, fell in love with her. She left the circus and went with him to Europe. While in Europe, she became the assistant to a famous spiritualist medium named Hume, and with him, traveled throughout Europe and America. All people view as long and difficult. Your past sorrows will pull you backward and you will have to retrace your steps and start again. Let go of the memories of past trials and tribulations. Don't look back or you will fail. Fix your attention upon the teacher whom you cannot yet see, but already anticipate. Well.